What is a pure footballer? Recently, Eden Hazard was asked to name players that were more talented than him. He said individually, Messi is perhaps the only one. He is the greatest player ever. Cristiano is a greater player than me, but in terms of pure football, honestly, I don't know. This answer sparked a lot of discussion on the internet. Not even necessarily about Hazard versus Ronaldo, but more so about the term pure footballer. What does it mean to be a pure footballer? I think that many people always want exact definitions for terms that don't have exact definitions. It's similar to the term world class. There is no set definition of what world class means in football. Some might say that a player is world class if that player is top 5 in his position, but then other people might say that a player is world class if he gets into every team in the world. These terms mean different things to different people. Fans often look for objective definitions in a sport that is entirely subjective. If you want an objective definition for what a pure footballer is, you will never get one. For me, it's quite simple. A pure footballer is someone who has a great amount of technical ability, natural ability, and is overall a joy to watch. When I say natural ability, I don't mean players who are simply just naturally gifted. You can't make it to the top by just being naturally gifted. You have to work an insane amount to reach the top. No footballers just have natural talent. They had to work a lot to garner that talent. For example, people always try to discredit Messi by saying he is a natural talent and that Ronaldo had to work to become this good. If you believe that Messi didn't put in an unbelievable amount of work to become the GOAT, then this sport isn't for you. Just because Ronaldo posts videos of him sprinting doesn't mean that Messi doesn't work hard. What I mean by natural ability is that a player has the ability to make the sport look effortless. The players who are untouchable and glide around the field with ease. There is an elegance to their game that not many can replicate. Throughout my entire life, I have valued pure footballers. I have valued a player's ability over everything else. There are people who like to use the term aesthetic merchant to describe people like me. This means that people care more about how a player looks on the field rather than their accomplishments and effectiveness. Is this a bad thing? I never understood people who use these types of terms. It is not a bad thing to enjoy the sport in this way. If you enjoy watching players that are aesthetically pleasing, that's perfectly fine. Calling people aesthetic merchants means that you are trying to suck the enjoyment out of watching the sport. I don't really care how many goals a player scores, if I don't enjoy the way they move, if I don't enjoy the way they play, and if I don't think they have an insane amount of technical ability, then that's perfectly fine. For example, Erling Haaland is not a pure footballer in my eyes. Yes, he is the best goal scorer on the planet, but I don't enjoy watching him play. People act like that is a crime, but it's really not. Think about all the legends in the sport. Most of them are pure footballers. Most of them are remembered because of the joy people had watching them and because of the things they could do with a football. Now, most people don't watch the sport in this way. Modern fans care about statistics. They care about how much XG a player generates. They care about how many chances are created. They care about how many attempted dribbles a player had. And they care about combining goals and assists. If you watch the sport like this, then that's perfectly fine. But trying to slate people who don't care about stats that much is so, so silly because that is how football has always been. No one cared about how many goals and assists Zidane and Ronaldinho had. No one knows how many goals and assists they had because it doesn't matter. They were magicians. They made the game look effortless and could do things on the ball that most players will never be able to do. When I was growing up, I loved David Silva. I never looked up what his stats were because it wasn't important to me. I knew that what I was watching was so special because I was actually watching him play. A lot of people today don't watch many games, so they have to rely on judging players based on their sofa score ratings or by their trophy cabinets. Now let's get a bit deeper into what I value when it comes to being a pure footballer. For me, defenders and goalkeepers are not pure footballers. Most of their game requires a very different element that doesn't really fit into this idea. The modern game has allowed for very attacking-minded fullbacks, but the only defender who I would class as a pure footballer is Trent Alexander-Arnold, mainly because a lot of his qualities are very midfielder-esque. When it comes to midfielders, a pure footballer would be someone who is very elegant, players who could pick out any pass with a variety of techniques. They know when to pass it, how to pass it, and where to pass it. Players who can disguise their passes and fool every player on the field. Players who can drive a ball 40 yards, chip a ball in behind, hit a Travella pass around or in between two defenders. And when it comes to dribbling, it's players that can have the ball glued to their feet, have incredible close control in tight spaces, and glide past players with ease. 
This topic is so difficult to explain because it's more of a feeling you get watching these players and it's a feeling that is difficult to explain to people who don't watch the sport in the same way. There are categories of players within the idea of pure footballer as well. There are players who were both pure footballers and had incredible careers. There are players who were pure footballers and had average careers. And then there are players who are not pure footballers but had incredible careers. Some midfielders I would place in the first category are Luka Modric, Iniesta, Xavi, Xavi, Zidane, and Pirlo. There are obviously so many to name, but these are players that held a lot of greatness when it comes to their careers, but also were pure footballers. Players who would fit into the second category would be players like Thiago Alcantara and Paul Pogba. These were two players with immense talent and ability. They were both technically incredible, but will never be regarded as greats of the game, but they were definitely pure footballers. Tiago is one of the best examples of a pure footballer I can think of. Go watch some of his highlights if you want to know what I mean by pure footballer. And then in the final category would be a player like N'Golo Kante. Kante is a legend in his own right, but he was not a pure footballer. He didn't have an incredible amount of technical ability but he was a top player for other reasons. When it comes to attacking players, I think wingers who are pure footballers would be classified as that mostly because of their dribbling ability. For example, Neymar was technically excellent at every attacking aspect of the game, but his dribbling and his skills is what stood out mostly. He had incredible close control, he was an excellent ball carrier, and he could do every skill imaginable. He is the definition of a pure footballer for me. Yes, other players have had better careers, but what Neymar could do with the football is unmatched. He's one of the most talented players ever. Another top winger who isn't a pure footballer is Mo Salah. Salah is obviously an incredible player, but he isn't technically good enough for me to call him a pure footballer, which is why I'll always rate a player like Eden Hazard above him. They were both great, but because Hazard was more of a pure footballer, I'll always like Hazard more and rate him higher in these all-time debates. Looking at strikers as pure footballers is very interesting because I don't think that there are that many in the modern game. For a striker to be a pure footballer for me, he would have to be a natural finisher and very well-rounded technically. I think Zlatan Ibrahimovic is the best example of this. He was elite at every attacking aspect of the game. He made it look so easy. He could finish from anywhere on the field using any sort of technique and he always knew where the goal was. In the Premier League today, I think the striker that is closest to being a pure footballer is Alexander Isak. He is fantastic on the ball and has that natural finishing ability. Someone like Ali Watkins is a decent striker but lacks that natural finishing ability for me. He tries extremely hard to score and there is no effortlessness in his game. If you still don't know what I'm talking about, I'll give you one final example. For the past few seasons, there has been this debate between Phil Foden and Bukayo Saka. People have debated who the better player is. For me, Phil Foden is the better player because he is more of a pure footballer. Saka could score 30 goals in every season, but I don't rate him that highly in terms of technical ability. Sure, he could somehow end up having a greater career and being a more effective player than Phil Foden in terms of output. But again, that's not how I enjoy the sport. Foden is a joy to watch because of his ability on the ball and the naturalness of his game. Saka doesn't have that. Generally, for me, a player's ability trumps all. If that's not how you watch the sport, that's fine. But my mind will never be taken over by obsessing over stats and trophies. I fell in love with the sport because of the joy I got from watching players like Ibra, Yaya Torre, and Gareth Bale. I didn't care about how many goals a player scored or if they lifted a trophy at the end of the season. I cared about what they did with a football. So that is the end of the video. If you have any questions or you disagree with anything I said, please let me know in the comments. I love to hear what you all think. Drop some player names in the comments below and I'll let you know if I think they are pure footballers or not. Thank you all for getting me to 1400 subscribers. It means a lot. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy the video. And once again, thanks for watching.